Let's kick off our post-show wrap-up with our developers panel. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here backstage. Excellent job on the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> as, uh, also joining us in a little bit, you know her as one of the hosts of the show and Mojang's chief brand officer, Lydia Winters. But let's jump into the panel first. So, Corey, you work on the vanilla gameplay team. What are your plans for the Illusioner mob? Oh, the Illusioner. Mm -hmm. All right. So the Illusioner has been in the game for quite a while, but it hasn't actually, in, at least in Java Edition, but it hasn't actually been part of the, the core game. It's just been there kind of hiding. Uh, so I really want to add the Illusioner to the game. We've been wanting to add it for a while, but we didn't have the technical capabilities originally. So we've been working on building up those capabilities so that we can add it in. And I really, really want to see them into raids. I think they would be perfect for raids. I think they would be a great addition to those and uh, planning that soon, hopefully. Awesome. All right, so next up is Jason. Jason, you're on the platform team for Bedrock. When will complete parity happen? So we, for every update, we want to actually have each update come out at the same time for both versions, for all the updates moving forward. There's obviously a back catalog of parity differences, and we are working through those as quick as possible. But realistically, we'll probably never have full parity because there are different technical, they're just a different technical platform that each one is on, and there's different design considerations as well. So like on Bedrock, we have to make sure that touch and controller work really well, mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to tweak gameplay as a result of that to get everything to feel as good as it possibly can. But we want to make sure at least spiritually the games, both, like both platforms feel like the same game. Mm -hmm. And when, if ever, will we be seeing penguins? Because I saw your, that, that was super cute. Hopefully soon, but uh, maybe you have to convince some people. All right, well, if you need any help, I don't know, maybe I can blow up Twitter or something. We did get the brown mushroom in last year. Yes, we did. All right, well, our next question is about the character creator, and we have Sarah here. Uh, Sarah, will there be additional free options in character creator in the future besides what's in the beta right now? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of as what Jared had spoken to earlier, um, there's stuff you can get through achievements, but then an additional like to that, there's going to be more free stuff that people will be able to get over time. Nice. All right. So now let's go to a question about Minecraft Earth. And we have the game director, Torfi, here to answer. Torfi, is there a limit to the number of people who can participate in an adventure? Yeah, there's a limit. It's kind of like the limit with elevators. It's like how many people you can physically squeeze <laughs> together. Because you actually have to be there in the same place. Yeah. You can't like play an adventure together like from, from different houses or different cities. You have to actually be in that park at that time. Uh, the cap actually is 40. It's just a number we typed in. Like we were <laughs> testing it, and uh, and you know it, it could go higher and higher and higher. We were just afraid what would happen if more than 40 people would pile up on, on each other on like a three meter by three meter square. So 40 was the safe spot. I mean, yeah. 40 is still a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of a luxury problem to have. Yeah, have totally. 40 you usually don't hear about it working out that way. No. <laughs> How does the uh, game determine who's playing with you? Well, that's actually quite simple. Mm -hmm. The game determines who is in the adventure simply by who's there. So if, if I'm in that park at that time, now remember the, or not remember, I haven't told anyone, but <laughs> Now you can remember, after I tell you now, that uh, <laughs> the game spawns the adventure, let's say, in, in, your, in your park, and, uh, and, it's, and it's only there for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, so you get in, and, and it lives there for 10 minutes, and you play the adventure, but then, then you know, some, by virtue of some sort of magic, it starts unspawning. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the people who are there, even if they don't know each other, if it's just the same people, they're part of the same adventure, and they share the same prizes. But w when it collapses, in the, uh, like these spawns, they're out. So, Got it. Yeah. OK, interesting. All right, so we also have the game director for Minecraft Dungeons here, Mons. Uh, Mons, do you have a favorite ability in Minecraft Dungeons that we should look forward to? Sure. So the way uh, abilities work in Minecraft Dungeons is that they're kind of separated between artifacts that you have in your hotbar, they have a cooldown. And then there's the enchantments, uh, where you invest points that you get as you level up into gear. Mm -hmm. um, so I think combining those um, gives some really interesting gameplay. Um, so I'm a t the type of person who likes to play an archer character, take out enemies from a distance. Mm -hmm. So combining the multi-shot enchantment for both, which lets you, lets you kill a bunch of mobs at once, um, and then using the fireworks arrow to sort of get fireworks all over the screen, um, I think that's really fun. That's super cool. All right, so um, let's now get into some vanilla gameplay questions, this time for Agnes from the vanilla gameplay team. Agnes, why are there no female villagers? 
Okay, yeah. So the reason is that we actually don't have any enders at all in Minecraft. Uh, I mean, I am aware of that the existing villagers do look quite much like men, but they are not actually. I, it's more for historical reasons that mm -hmm. look like men. Uh, and we also, when we made all the new villager skins for the village and village update, we really thought a lot about making sure they were neutral. To, mm -hmm. to show that we don't have any, any genders. Very nice. All right, so we have a question for Frederick from the Realms team. Frederick, will we be able to use the content that we get from Realms Plus in places other than our realm? Yes. Like the, nice. the content that is included in Realms Plus is uh, you, it's available just as any other marketplace content. If there's a skin, you can equip it and you can play on it on the realm, but you can also play it on, a, on, on locally or with your friends if you have a server. And, and, if you have content already on your realm and you want to try out some other piece of content that's mm -hmm. included, you can just download it and play it locally and offline. So, that's great. Yeah. So once you've got it, you can utilize yeah, it pretty it, much it, wherever. All the 50 pieces of content that is included, mm -hmm. you, you can use it wherever you want. Awesome. All right, so some general questions. So whoever wants to dive into these, that's totally fine. First up is, which feature was the most fun for you to add into Minecraft? You. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I mean, there are so many features that I worked on in Village and Pillage. A lot of them were really fun, mm -hmm. but I think the overall most fun was the simplest one, which was brown mushrooms. Because uh, at the last Minecon developer panel, somebody asked why we didn't have brown mushrooms, and I just kind of went out and said I would add them. Uh, well, so now, and now you, you were forced to. And it, yeah, I mean, I didn't really talk to the team about it. You know, I just kind of went ahead and said that, and then... It was okay, we ended up adding it, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that the Illusioner will be this year's uh, brown mushroom. Very oh. cool, mm. oh, very cool. Sorry, guys. Okay, anybody else has a yeah. particular favorite that they wanna talk about? The, uh, I loved working on the entire Update Aquatic, but mm -hmm. especially on Update Aquatic, the uh, tropical fish. So it was kind of funny, because initially we were like, we're just gonna put a clownfish in there, and it was working on the coral, and I'm like, corals have way more color variations than this and stuff like that, and I was like, hey, what if we made like, 16 colors of fish, and then I'm like, well, what if we had like two shapes? What if we had 16 colors of stripes? What if we had this? And then we had like 3,500 different <laughs> patterns of fish or something, so it kind of grew up, but it was so much fun to do that, and I love seeing that, like how it turned out in the reefs as a result. Personal question off the top of my head, just because I'm curious about this, but there's so many options in order to build things and be creative in Minecraft. Do you ever find yourself having to pull back? And then if so, how do you make those decisions? Yeah, so just the easy one off the top of my head, y'all. That's how I good guess. I am. <laughs> Does anybody want to go for that, or did I scare, scare you all? I mean, when you're working on, I mean, I work on vanilla Minecraft. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're thinking of features for vanilla Minecraft, you could go as, you, you kind of think big, and then you shrink it down to what will actually fit in vanilla. Because you could go super crazy and think about the craziest, funnest thing possible. Yeah. But that might not fit in the game. It might not work for all player types, and you kind of have to shrink it down. That happens for almost every feature, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it's always a bit of a give and take. Definitely. Yeah. The, key it. Thing is, the key thing is making sure we get all the features that do make it in to be as polished as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, we could put twice as many things in there, but they're not going to have the polish that we'd have otherwise. Yeah. So yeah. By, by keeping the updates tight, we can make everything be amazing. Yeah, and I would also say that it's also oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Okay, right. <laughs> important that, uh, that whatever you put in there doesn't have just like one function. Like mm -hmm. you, you generally, if you add the block or you add them up, they, they should have like multiple functions and be connected to multiple systems. Like we have this new chicken in Minecraft called the clock room. And the clock room actually loves to hide in the darkness and lays mushrooms. And uh, it was actually a problem when we were testing it. I don't it. blame it. I, yeah. put, I, put it, I put a bunch of them on a build plate, and I was like turned back, and I looked back, and they were all gone. We thought it was a bug, and we started debugging it. But we realized later that they had found a small crack uh -huh. in, the, in the ground, like a little tunnel into the ground, and I started digging, and they were all hiding like in a, in a little hole. <laughs> <laughs> the because uh, they're ashamed that they're laying mushrooms. <laughs> I, I think to Toffee's point as well, um, so... We, we really think about when we add these things, like, like you have with the clutch room, uh, and like when we add things to dungeons, about how it fits into Minecraft as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have loads and loads of ideas, obviously, and they all go into sort of a phase of, of pruning, and then we take the things that feel like they really belong in the game, and then we add those. Very cool. Agnes, did you want to finish your thought? And then the next question actually is for you, too. Okay, no, sure, but I can finish this one. No, so 
Yes, related to this, we work a lot, you know, very iterative and with prototypes mm -hmm. uh, and to make sure that it's actually fun in game. So we make sure to like implement all the things very early so we can test in game and then decide based on how it feels in game, what should stay in the update and what should be removed. And it's also not a failure if you, we, for example, like remove a prototype. That's part of the, the process to make sure that we really have fun things that right. we deliver. All right, well, so the next question for you actually is a Twitter question, okay. and it is, will you update all three biomes eventually, but first the one that got voted or only the one that got voted? We will update all of them eventually. So, yeah, but mountains will be first. Very cool. Good, because that's the one I voted for. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> totally did. Do I was back that. here while you guys were on stage. I'm like, I'm going to go. go, go I, voted. Voted. <laughs> I voted for swamps. <laughs> but I really well, like you lost. <laughs> I did. But I, I, I like mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I can finally finish. I've been working on this, um, this uh, the Shining Hotel, that Overlook Hotel, mm -hmm. for like two years now. And now that the mountains, I'm going to wait until the mountain update comes out, and then I'm going to bust out with it. I'm oh. very excited. Oh. All right, so moving on uh, about. Uh, less about me, more about you guys. Uh, this is um, to everybody as well. Uh, what is the funniest bug that you've ever encountered? <laughs> kind of going off of what you were saying about yeah, right. the collection rooms. There was one in the character creator for a while where like, when you loaded up the game, for whatever reason, they would blink and then it would get faster and faster and faster and faster, just like <laughs> constantly blinking. It was the most like, oh my God, they're possessed now. It was yeah. frightening. That sounds amazing. Especially, you should have left that in. I know, right? <laughs> it's definitely a feature, especially in like the lineup of five, like on the carousel. Yeah. It was so bizarre. That's super creepy. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else has a favorite? When we were bringing the animation system into Bedrock, um, all the pigs all of a sudden, they, they kind of rotated their whole bodies this way and their head was on the ground. It kind of looked like a pink vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and they were running around the world like that with their head scraping yeah. the ground. It was the funniest thing. I really like all this. You know, yes, when the mob's models get weird, which they kind of always get when we add a new animal to Minecraft, because it's, at least in Java, it's super tricky to add them. So yeah. it's often like the head is there, and the le <laughs> like the legs are up, up on the back, and it just looks super weird, and they walk around. Has there ever been a bug that you guys have run into that you liked so much that you just left alone? All the oh, time. yes. All the time. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> we have a, a thing in Dungeons where... Um, if you, so the arch illager sometimes appears and disappears, and it does that by kind of getting really small and then getting bigger again. And so we had this bug where if you shot him while he was really, really small, um, the arrow would scale up with him. And suddenly when he's big <laughs> again, there's this giant arrow <laughs> shooting at him. Um, and uh, now in the game, we have an enchantment called growing. So if you shoot, the arrow kind of gets a little bit bigger. Oh, that's cool. Mm. Oh, that's good fun. problem solving. All right, so this one is for everyone, and it also is from Twitter. What are your favorite mobs? Ooh, okay, I actually, <laughs> might be a weird answer, but I really like sheep. <laughs> that's totally, <laughs> yeah. that's fine, yeah. And, and I like, when I play myself, I think, well, maybe except horses, sheep as mobs I have most, like in, in my big town I'm building, and, and I'm using a lot of, you know, color their wool, so I can build funny, colorful buildings with it. Is that what attracts you to the, the sheep as the mob? Like, what is it about the sheep that you like? Well, I mean, they are cute, but yes, it's the wool and that you can color it. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else has a, a has a one fave? that I think is amazing, which is part of, uh, part of the new mobs from Minecraft Earth, and it's unannounced, so I'm not going to talk oh. about oh. it. Maybe that's the next new? poll maybe. for next <laughs> year, is that's which cool. mob do you think was Torfi's favorite <laughs> <laughs> for next year. We've got it figured out. Um, all right, so here's a good one. Uh, where do you guys see Minecraft going in the next 10 years? So we want to continue update Minecraft for many years, much more than yes, 10 years. Um, so I think we will continue probably to have these major updates. Mm -hmm. uh, two updates here approximately and then just continue and then of course we need to make sure to always keep minecraft minecrafty mm -hmm. and that's something we think a lot about yeah. as, as soon as we add anything or just fix a bug we, we always need to think so we don't like break the magic of yeah. minecraft no i think that's brilliant we were actually talking yesterday about how at this point minecraft is pretty iconic so i feel like it's you know it's here to stay and it's always going to remain relevant mm. um does anybody else have any specific things that they think are going to uh, Minecraft in 10 well, years? I mean, you're in a unique position because you've got dungeons, and that's a whole different ballgame yeah. of sorts. So from our perspective, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about uh, all the new games coming out. Uh, both Earth and Dungeons, I think, are 
uh, exciting, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that happening. Um, but I'm also looking forward to updating dungeons over time. So mm -hmm. we'll launch it, but then we'll keep updating it uh, as we go, just like we do with regular Minecraft. Not to put you in the hot seat, but what's the pressure been like knowing that you're taking such a beloved game and kind of shifting gears with it in a different direction? Mm -hmm. Uh, You're it's, like, it's been the worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's certainly a little spooky. Uh, uh -huh. and, and it's something that we think about a lot as we make it. Uh, but we have the luxury of sitting right next to the vanilla team. So mm -hmm. if, if we need to like sync with uh, Agnes or Corey or Jens, uh, we just walk over there and do that. Yeah. And that's uh, tremendously useful for this. Yeah. That's we great. actually collaborate a lot uh, on the design. So we have, yeah, I mean, we sit next to each other, but we also have like weekly things where we talk through all like the design questions mm -hmm. that come up and inform each other. So we're really synced, which is really good. There you go. Just like Minecraft, you need to learn how to collaborate in order yeah. to build great things. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, hire me for your PR. All right, so <laughs> Torfi, this one's from um, Twitter. Okay. What will Minecraft Earth be like for those in rural areas compared to those in cities and suburbs? Well, that's a good question. So Minecraft Earth has you know, these features that we looked at, the adventures and the build mode, but in order to go out and find the adventures and to collect blocks, you have to like walk, basically use your feet. Uh, and, and there's a map, and uh, we used OpenStreetMap, which is like an open source database, which is a really amazing map of the entire globe. Mm -hmm. So in order to pick the places where we put the content, we didn't choose the path that other games have gone to have players go out and promote uh, areas, because what happens then is it's mostly like places in big cities or, or in bigger towns. But OpenStreetMap literally has a map of every small town in the world. So uh, we had a bit, of a bit of a problem. I probably shouldn't talk about it right now, but I will. I mean, feel free. That, yeah. that, <laughs> that some people, like, people are playing Minecraft Earth right now in five cities, but some people found out a way how to play them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and when that happened, like, I woke up and I opened the map, and I can see like a, like a, you know, a heat map of the world where people are playing, and it was like literally everywhere. It was like small towns in Russia, somewhere in Siberia, <laughs> somewhere in South America, in Africa, and in Asia. Like it was, it was literally like a virus infection of the entire world, <laughs> which is cool, but you know, shouldn't have happened. <laughs> the point I'm saying is uh, uh, it should be, should be everywhere that, where people live. So like not in some like random hill in the middle of the Sahara, maybe mm -hmm. not, but mm -hmm. where people live and where's the map, there should be Minecraft Earth. Very cool. Totally random, and maybe you did or didn't do this, and I wouldn't know because I haven't played the beta yet. But are there any Easter eggs at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Ton, tons. tons. Yeah. Great. Well, I will be outside a yeah. lot. All right. <laughs> so um, again, this one's to everyone. This one's from Twitter. Um, actually, you know what? I'm taking that back. I want to. I want to move on to a different one. Corey, what things are important to consider when brainstorming ideas to suggest to developers or make into a vanilla style mod? That's a big question. I know. <laughs> That's why I switched it up, because the other one I think is going to be more fun. Yeah, so when, when you're kind of thinking of ideas, uh, when we think of ideas, we try to think first of, would this fit in with the original game? Does it add something to it? Mm -hmm. And then we think, does it work with other features that are already in the game? We really try to add things that will interact with the, the game loop and try to bring everything together. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're thinking of features to suggest, try to think about how does this interact with features that are already in the game? How would this uh, enhance them, for instance? Like penguins would really enhance <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> you make them chase fish. And yeah, they'd be perfect. But that's what you got to think through, is exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. They would, they would interact with fish. You know, there's uh, glaciers they, that were added. And they drop water. feathers. They'd be on glaciers. They... <laughs> I, like the, I like the pitch that I've started. I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't think I'm allowed to go two mobs in one developer panel, so I'm going to yeah. hold off there. No worries, no worries. All right, so this is the other question that I was holding off on. This is for everybody. What are your favorite pizza toppings? <laughs> you want to just start and go around? Oh, yeah. I love pepperoni. Nice, classic. solid choice. I like the classics. Oh, uh, it's like a, a tomato and cheese pizza. Nothing, yeah. nothing yeah. fancy. That's fine. It's totally fine. I think bell pepper. Actually. Bell pepper. Yeah. OK. Nah. This is, this is a tricky question. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> or a tricky question. <laughs> Thank God. Well, to be fair, like if there's a really good cheese on it, I probably think yeah, some mozzarella, which is mm -hmm. quite basic as well. Mm. But yes, I would say so. You thought that was tricky? I thought that was a perfectly <laughs> hard <laughs> answer. I've had to thought for a long time. I think for a long time. That's true. You guys have actually been on stage for like a good solid two hours. I'm sure you're starving. Uh, Torfi, what about you? What's your favorite pizza topping? I once topic? had a pizza in a restaurant in Eastern Iceland 
which was called Rudolf, and it had it had like reindeer ma- meat and red oh. berries. It's very sad. Red oh. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. But uh, but was generally it? just uh, pepperoni and, and pineapple. <laughs> 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 was it? Was I mean, emotionally sad, yes. But was it tasty? Sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. <laughs> kind of yes. Uh, what about you guys? Ham, pineapple, and bacon. Ooh, mixing it up. I'm with Agnes here. Like a, a really good mozzarella cheese. There's a one called Scamorsa, which is like a smoky. Uh, smoky. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, it's so good. Smoky I need to try yeah. that. Okay, I'm really hungry now. Great. <laughs> I know, me too. I know I'm like, got dinner. to shake. I'm like, oh, let's get some food. All right, so last question. Um, I know we briefly touched upon it before about the biome, but let's talk about the result of the biome vote. How do you guys feel about mountains being in this year's winning biome? I mean, we know you wanted swamp. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but I'm super happy about mountains as well. I mean, we, okay. we like all of them otherwise, so I guess we wouldn't have them in the vote. So, no, it, it will be great, and I'm excited to start prototype on it and see what will happen with them with, like, the cooler uh, mountain generation and things like that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody else? I've, yeah. been, I've yeah. been campaigning internally for goats for about a year now. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> ecstatic that mountains won. Yeah. And awesome. I, Team goats. I think that the one of the best things about vanilla is that we've been doing recently is taking the features that have been there for a long time and then kind of updating them. So yeah. it would be really nice to give a fresh coat of paint to the mountains. Fantastic. You guys, too, are you on board for the oh, mountains? Oh, yeah, 100% all on, you know, Team Mountain Goat. <laughs> You're like, I'm in a dungeon, I don't. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I, think I think it'll be good. I'm a little bit sad about not seeing the frog. But <laughs> yeah, the frog was it. cute. You will. All right. That's Eventually. a solid yes. point. The frog was super <laughs> adorable. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me, and congrats again on such an excellent show. You did an amazing job up there, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new updates. Uh, before Lydia Winters joins me backstage, let's take a quick look at some of the highlights from Minecon 2019. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome, Lydia, and congrats on an excellent show. How are you feeling now that everything is wrapping up? It feels amazing and surreal, and it's like, it's hard to describe. It's something you've been working on for so long, mm-hmm. and then the show happens so quickly, you're like, oh, I need to watch it back so I can actually live it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's kind of like a wedding. You do all this planning, and then it happens. You're like, did that just happen? Um, but you loaded us down with amazing content. It, I was enjoying myself the entire time. What was your favorite moment of the show? I know it's a hard, it's that's a, a hard, hard one choice. because it's like all, you know. Do you want to split them up in two? What was your favorite, um, I guess, uh, game related announcement? Oh, I can't. Game, this is like choosing kids, I would imagine, if you have them. Like, <laughs> how, do I, how do I pick? I, I think the main thing for me was this year, the thing I loved is that we got to show so much of our, like, what's happening in the studio. So, like, mm-hmm. last year we got to kind of, we announced Dungeons, but we said very little about it, you know. And this year to get to show gameplay of Dungeons and Earth, it just felt like, how huge is it? it mm-hmm. This was the first show where we felt like, we have to cut content. It's too much stuff, which yeah. is, like, the most luxury problem to have. Like, there's too many cool things to tell everyone. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed the Dungeons trailer as well. I thought that was super cute. It was amazing. So that's going to s- actually start the game. So oh, that is the intro sequence, and it will put you, you know, in the mindset of what's happening in the game so that you can go off and, like, mm-hmm. start playing, which feels like that was so exciting to yeah. premiere here. I also like the mini, the, like, the physical mini games that you guys had on stage. That was maybe one of, I was sitting here and I'm like, oh man, I wish I could play that right now. They were (laughs) amazing. They were so good. And especially because they've been practicing, but with nothing 
like yeah. actually sticky or gross in the Oh, so they didn't know what they were touching. No, so they they you know, we practice with things like cups and just normal stuff so you oh, you kind of dig around and I just their responses <laughs> couldn't have bet been better and like just seeing the scene where Scott was digging and like Maso was like was yeah, I just loved it. His Maso face like was my like new favorite. He should host so much stuff. Like he's my new favorite of all time. I was just like, oh my gosh, that guy's adorable. Um, how excited are you for the year ahead? I mean, you guys have come a long way and you've got a ton of stuff. It's really amazing. I mean, when I started at the company, someone told me like every year it gets crazier and crazier with Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And now I'm into like past my eighth year working on it. And honestly, every year gets crazier and crazier. And I don't think 2020 is going to slow down when we <laughs> launch two new games. Do you ever and get three a with the board game? Do you ever get a chance to kind of when you come out with so much content to to sit back for a little bit and just kind of take a breath and assess and just enjoy what you've made? Or is I, it immediately back to the drawing board because, you know, Minecraft being what it is, you there's always the demand. I feel like this might be that only moment that I have. Like, like right now, this very and second. like enjoying <laughs> it and then we'll all, you know, we'll We'll start talking again, like, oh, this year, next year we can do this because that worked really well. And it's just, you know, when you work on something that you love and are super excited about it, it's hard to not do it. Awesome. Um, out of the voting, was the mountain biome your personal pick or which one were you shoot rooting for? I'm from Florida, so I was a bit biased towards the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we'll have Minecraft Festival in Florida, so, you know, we can have mountains in Minecraft. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought that up, because that's a perfect transition into my next question about the announcement of Minecraft Festival 2020 being super exciting. Uh, what are you most looking forward to there? I think it's always awesome when we get to spend time with the community because our players are so important to us and at the heart of everything we do. So when you get to be around people who are so excited about Minecraft, it's very, very contagious. So I think it's mm -hmm. something that we missed getting to meet with people and now to combine sort of the original Minecon of having an in-person thing with this amazing show and really think about how do we take everyone on a journey. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. That's and it's awesome. in Orlando, so again, you know, you go. back to my Florida roots. Yeah. So my mom is very happy. Oh, awesome, you're gonna hang out with, your, hang out with the <laughs> They'll just be happy to get to come. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me in the after show. To the folks at home, thank you for joining us backstage today. I've had an absolute Absolutely wonderful time bringing you a little peek of what's to come for Minecraft. It has been an excellent Minecon Live 2019, and we look forward to seeing you all next year. Have a good one, and bye! Bye! bye. Thank you!